George H.W. Bush was one of the most extraordinary human beings I've ever met. He, he's everything you read about him and, and see about him, if you, you watched his funeral at the National Cathedral. He was an amazing gentleman. He, when he was vice president, I had been pretty well known because HIV started in, in 81 and he became president in 88, elected in 88 and inaugurated in 89. So when he was vice president, he called up the department and said, I really want to go to the NIH and meet this guy Fauci who I've seen on television and radio doing things with HIV because I want to learn about HIV. I don't think there was anything special about me. He's just a very warm guy and he became my friend. Uh, in the sense of inviting me to the vice president's mansion and said, when I become president, I'll take you to the White House. So he became, I always say that jokingly, when in Washington, be nice to everybody because you never know where they're going to wind up. <laughs> so he wound up being president. Um, and when he was president, he, he did an incredible amount and we skyrocketed in, in our, uh, our interest. So he was interested in that, but was very much of, you know, that compassionate conservative type of a person. That was the catch word that he used to say, but he really felt that in so many different ways. People that are clean and honorable and out there setting a, uh, uh, setting the pace. I think a Dr. Fauci, probably never heard of him. Well, you did, Ann heard him. He's a very fine research, top doctor at National Institute of Health, working hard doing something about research on this disease of AIDS. When George W. Bush became president, he called me into his office and he said, Tony, as a rich nation, I feel it sounded like it sounded like Regis. You know, he said, as a rich nation, we have a moral responsibility to save the lives and alleviate suffering for people who are suffering and dying only because they live in a part of the world that doesn't have what we have. So go to Africa and figure out how we could put together a program that would be transforming. And I, and I said, well, Mr. President, that's going to cost billions of dollars. He says, let me worry about that. Go to Africa and come back and tell me if it's possible. A lot of people did, thought you couldn't do that in Africa, and I think that was maybe a little bit of a subliminal below the radar racism that Africans can't take medicines or they'd never be able to stay on a schedule. So I went there and I saw that there were people who actually, when you gave them drug, a few philanthropists had some drugs, gave it to them. They actually took it. They were conscientious and they understood the disease. So I came back and I said, we can do it. So he said, okay, come down to the White House and work with my staff and put together a program, model it, and, and let's do it. And that's how PEPFAR was born. He said, what do you want to call it? And I said, well, why don't we call it the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief? And he said, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's interesting. He is so modest. He doesn't like to take credit for it. And they, I tell you this because so many people have the wrong impression of him. So he started a program. If it, was, it wasn't me, it was him telling me to go and do it. So, I mean, he deserves all the credit. He gave me the Presidential Medal of Freedom for doing it, but he should have given himself the Presidential Medal of Freedom.